Hi, it's Danielle here from the Teaching Entrepreneur Association. And in this video, I wanted to talk to you about assessment in the online classroom. And the reason for that is that Ofsted has said that there are three things that at the moment um, people are struggling with, teachers are struggling with. The first is engagement, the second is access, and the third is assessment. So in other videos, I've talked about the other two, but in this one, I wanted to talk to you particularly about how can you assess your students in an online class? And by that, I mean, how are we gonna check that learning has taken place? And this means at the beginning, the middle, and at the end of the, at the, end of the class or course or whatever it might be. So your uh, initial, your formative, and your summative assessment. It can be quite daunting because actually all you've got is faces looking at you. But one of the things that I like to do is use targeted and individualized questions. So I will talk to a student and say, Billy, what is the answer to this? Or Bill, how do you think we can, um, can you expand on that? Or how do you think we can add to that? What, where are you going with this? Or perhaps um, give me an example of that. So what I'm trying to do the whole time is find out whether they understand what I've taught, whether they know what I've taught. Okay, so you can do that here, there and everywhere within the class. But if you've got 15 students, sometimes, you know, and, and I have to be honest with you, my memory is not what it used to be in my younger days. So I do struggle to remember, you know, whether, whether that's happened. So what I do is I get a sheet down and I actually write the questions down so I'm ready and I'll tick or I'll query it if, you know, if, if uh, as to whether a student does know the answer or, or doesn't. So questioning, don't be scared to question students. Sometimes even in the chat box, I'll put a question in the chat box and get the whole group to, I'll be answering that question. And then I'll say to one of them, okay, and I'll put a post-it note up and say, Bill, or I'm picking on Bill here, but <laughs> you see what I mean? So that Bill will give me an answer to his question as well. Um, another way that I like to do assessments is with practicals. So lots of people say to me, but Danielle, I do a practical subject. How are people ever gonna, how can I check? So I can't see through the screen what they're doing. So I say on a webinar, you can make one student big, as it were, you know, the whole screen is one student. So what I tend to do is I'll say to that student, okay, I'm now gonna make you big. Can you show me what you were doing? And so, yes, yeah, sometimes the cameras are going a bit here and there, but on the whole, if they can talk you through how they've done something, you can see. And the beauty of doing it like this is that other students can pick up and see how they've done it. Ah, oh, so that's what she meant. Oh, I've got that now. Okay, that's how we did it. So again, you've got to be careful about your students. Are they happy to do that and all the rest of it? But as a whole, getting them to give a demonstration to the rest of the class, not only engages them, but it shows not only you that they know how to do it, obviously they, they'll know that they know how to do it, but also it gives tips to the others in the class. Because how many times have you explained something and the student go, no, I don't understand. And you go, okay, let's do it again. And the student will go, what she means is this. You say, I've spent ages just explaining that and you did it in two words. But, you're teaching. But what I'm trying to say to you is, use demonstration. Okay, so it might be difficult because, you know, as I say, with the cameras and all the rest of it, but there are ways around it. If you really want to do that, you know, you can say to them, okay, set the camera up outside or the laptop or whatever and point it to what you're doing and, you know, or just show me your hands as you're making a cake or whatever it is that you're doing. So that's another way of, of assessing. The other thing I like to do is to give... Um, I give out handouts or I give out assignments or I give out whatever it is and I ask them to work on something while I'm actually uh, doing the webinar at the same time. So I might say to them, okay, what I want you to do now is let's, just, let's um, talk about assessment. Can you tell me the ways that you use initial assessment? Just write down a few things about how you, how you use initial assessment. And then I'll either ask them to send in the papers that they've written on or um, or they'll email them to me or whatever it might be so that I again I can see whether they know what they're talking about 
And sometimes I'll get them to email them right then in the class and say, okay, what I want you to do now? Just click on the email tab, send me the stuff, and I look at it while, you know, maybe they're in the break or whatever it might be. But it gives me a clear guidance and I have evidence then that I know what they're doing. And the other thing you can do, but you've got to be very careful and make sure everybody agrees and, and you're happy with it, is to video. You know, video what they're doing in the class, because if you're asking questions and you need evidence to prove that, uh, to prove that they understand and they're giving you their answers, video it. Here at Tea, we're always creating new how-to guides, new top tips, tutorials, checklists, worksheets, templates, and so much more. The reason we do this is to help you learn and progress further and to really nail what I've been talking about. Don't forget, click on the link below to receive yours and to take this topic to the next level. Okay, so I hope you found that useful and I'll see you in another video.